The most powerful solar flare since 2017 erupted on the sun today. Of course, we couldn't see it with the naked eye, but you may see some of its effects, both good and bad. Are solar flares a direct cause for our climate change? We'll discuss the science behind them, what causes them to erupt, what is their impact on our planet, and how they form the most beautiful phenomenon on Earth. So, what are solar flares? Let's break it down. They are huge explosions of electromagnetic radiation. A flare appears as a sudden, intense glow on the surface of the sun, lasting several minutes to hours. Imagine a rubber band that snaps when it is twisted too far. The tangled magnetic fields release energy when they snap. The energy expelled during a solar flare is mind-blowing, over a million times greater than the force of a volcanic eruption on our home planet. Now here's the fascinating part. As solar flares erupt, they send out radiation into space. In cases of intense solar flares, this radiation can extend its reach to Earth, potentially causing interference with our radio communications. But we'll come back to this point later in the video. The observation of these cosmic events is an important aspect of our detective work. While solar flares can sometimes be seen in white light, they truly reveal their essence when observed through the brilliance of X-ray and ultraviolet emissions. The sun's activity is measured in periods of about 11 years. It goes through quiet periods with very few sunspots known as solar minimums and then active periods known as solar maximums. We are currently in a maximum phase, solar cycle 25. Every 11 years or so, the sun's magnetic field completely flips, meaning the sun's north and south poles switch places. But why is NASA concerned about this solar cycle particularly? The sun recently emitted a strong solar flare, peaking at 1.53 a.m. EST on Friday, February 16, 2024, less than two weeks ago. This flare is classified as an X2.5, for those of you who don't know, solar flares are classified according to their strength on the logarithmic scale, similar to how earthquakes are measured. The smallest ones are A-class, which occur at near background levels, followed by B, C, M, and X. The flare hurled towards Earth has an X2.5 intensity, meaning it is 2.5 times as strong as X1 solar flares, which are still on top of the tier list. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory, which watches the sun constantly, captured an image of the event. But what's the science behind solar flares? A and B class solar flares are insignificant, so let's get straight into the big ones. While the third category, C class, has the least visible impact on Earth's space weather, don't let their mild nature fool you. They can still cause minor disruptions in radio communication, especially in the polar regions. Next in line are the M-class solar flares, nestled between the C-class and the more potent X-class. These moderate flares bring a more noticeable impact on our planet's space weather, leading to brief radio communication blackouts, particularly in polar regions and occasional minor radiation storms. Now, brace yourselves for the big players, the X-Class solar flares. These are the most powerful and impactful of them all, significantly influencing Earth's space weather. Prepare for strong disruptions in radio signals and widespread blackouts. And if it's not enough, X-class flares are also linked with major radiation storms, posing a threat to astronauts in space. But wait, there's more. As we reminded earlier, even within the X-class category, we have further refinement based on intensity. The scale follows a logarithmic pattern where each numerical increase indicates a 10x rise in intensity. 
For example, an X2 flare has 10 times more power than an X1, and the scale continues. To quantify the intensity within each class, scientists assign numerical values. So, an M5 flare is stronger than an M2 flare, and an X2 flare is more intense than an X1 flare. Simple as that. Solar flares on Earth. One significant concern is the disruption to satellite communication systems. When solar flares release a surge of charged particles towards Earth, these particles can play havoc with satellites in orbit. The result? Signal degradation, temporary blackouts, or even complete loss of communication, a real headache for navigation and data transmission. But it doesn't stop there. Solar flares can also throw a wrench into our radio communication here on Earth. The intense solar radiation ionizes the Earth's upper atmosphere, causing disturbances in the propagation of radio waves. This can lead to disruptions in radio signals, affecting communication systems crucial for aircrafts, ships, and emergency services. What about power grids? The increased geomagnetic activity triggered by solar flares can induce electric currents in power lines on Earth. This geomagnetically induced current, GIC, isn't just a fancy term. It poses a real risk to transformers and other components of the power grid. The result? Potential equipment damage and widespread blackouts. Utility companies and power grid operators keep a close eye on solar activity, implementing preventive measures during heightened solar flare periods. And it's not just our communication systems and power grids on the line. Humans can get hurt too. Spacecraft and astronauts in orbit are also in the firing line when solar flares kick in. The increased radiation levels pose risks to both human health and the functionality of sensitive electronic equipment on spacecraft, meaning no oxygen or potentially stopping other vital mechanisms. But as always, better to prevent than to treat. Early warning systems and predictive models help anticipate the effects of solar flares. This foresight allows for precautionary measures, temporary shutdowns, adjustments to satellite orientations, a proactive dance with the cosmic forces. And now, for the moment you've all clicked this video for. How do solar flares form the northern lights? Have you ever seen the dazzling, dancing lights of the aurora in the night sky? The closer you are to the North or South Pole, the greater your chances are of seeing this amazing spectacle. Most of you don't know, but this enchanting natural phenomenon is also caused by solar flares. Northern and Southern Lights, also known as the Aurora Borealis and Aurora Australis, are a result of the interaction between solar flares, the solar wind, and Earth's magnetic field. But what's the science behind it? Solar flares release charged particles that, when directed by Earth's magnetic field, create a cosmic light show. These particles interact with gases in the Earth's atmosphere, resulting in the emission of different colors. The northern lights grace the northern hemisphere, while the southern lights illuminate the southern hemisphere. Solar flares act as conductors, influencing the frequency and intensity of these displays. The solar wind, a constant stream of charged particles from the sun, further enhances the cosmic spectacle. But why are auroras different colors? Auroras occur within one of Earth's upper atmosphere layers, the thermosphere. Solar particles trapped here interact with different types of gas molecules, mostly nitrogen and oxygen, resulting in unique, colored displays of light. Oxygen gives off green and red light, while nitrogen glows blue and reddish purple. Green-colored auroras are most frequent, resulting from interactions with oxygen molecules at lower altitudes, between 100 to 300 kilometers, or 62, 180 miles, while the less commonly occurring red auroras form from interactions with higher altitudes oxygen molecules, 
above 300 kilometers or 180 miles. However, auroras aren't exclusive to Earth. They can be observed on other planets with atmospheres and magnetic fields. Saturn and Jupiter, for example, showcase spectacular auroras, highlighting the universal nature of these phenomena. So, next time you find yourself under the mesmerizing glow of the auroras, know that it's a collaboration of solar flares, Earth's magnetic field, and the pure creativity of the universe. What about solar flare mysteries and future research? One of the captivating mysteries is the mechanism that triggers a solar flare. While we understand the pivotal role of magnetic energy in the sun's atmosphere, the exact processes leading to the release of vast amounts of energy remain complicated. Scientists are actively exploring the forces that set these explosions into motion. A puzzle within the mystery revolves around the connection between different layers of the solar atmosphere during a flare. The sun's outer layer, the corona, undergoes intense heating during solar flares, reaching temperatures higher than the layers beneath. Unraveling how this intense heating occurs and understanding the dynamics of energy transfer between different layers present significant challenges that researchers are determined to solve. Solar flare prediction is another focal point of research. Despite advancements in space weather forecasting, accurately predicting the occurrence, intensity, and specific characteristics of solar flares remains a formidable challenge. Enhancing our ability to forecast solar flares is essential for reducing potential impacts on Earth's technological infrastructure, including satellite communication and power grids. Expanding the scope, scientists are exploring the influence of solar flares on Earth's atmosphere and climate. This interdisciplinary research seeks to uncover potential connections between solar activity, including flares, and changes in Earth's climate patterns. The intricate relationships between solar phenomena and their consequences for our planet are under careful examination opening new frontiers in our understanding of the solar influence on Earth. So, do solar flares influence the climate change? The answer is no. As a recent study at NASA showed, the climate change is actually the opposite of what we expected to find when comparing the last year's numbers. The above graphic compares global surface temperature changes, red line and the sun's energy received by Earth, yellow line, in watts, units of energy, per square meter since 1880. The lighter, thinner lines show the yearly levels while the heavier, thicker lines show the 11-year average trends. So, do you still think that solar flares are a direct cause for our climate change? Maybe do a little more research on this topic and let us know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. More of them are coming up next, so make sure to not miss them. I also left you here two other amazing videos that you might find interesting. Feel free to watch them next. See you soon.